So I realize for many of you being stuck in an apartment or even just in town in a house, um, you might actually enjoy the process of doing chores. And for me, it's just kind of everyday life. But I thought since many of you are sitting at home looking for something to do, I would bring you along on some of my chore activities. So right now I'm just going to put a bale out for the horses. Um, typically we put round bales out uh, every week to every two weeks, depending on how many animals are out there. And um, yeah, so it's gonna be difficult for me to video and do all this, but I will do my best. So come along for the journey. Hey guys, welcome back. So I have taken my phone and put a tripod of sorts on it and attached it to the side of the skid steer. So hopefully you can hear me okay. These are ISO controls. There's my left hand controls if I go forward or backwards and how fast. My right hand controls my bucket or in this case I have forks on. So um, if the forks are tilting, or if the whole arm's going up or down. So that's basically the gist of it. And I'm gonna put my, take it from turtle speed up to rabbit speed. I'm gonna be very technical here. And uh, then we're gonna take our parking brake off and we're gonna go grab a bale. I'm gonna go straight into the bale. Then I'm going to gently pick it up and tilt my forks up like that so that it lifts the bale so it's not going to fall off. Then I'm going to back up. I probably should have cleaned the windows. Sorry about that. This time of year you don't really worry about things like that. Okay so right now I'm just using the left hand control because I don't need to tilt my bucket or do anything at the moment. I'm just backing out of the hay shed. Man, okay. This is like a whole new thing. Not only did I find it challenging to, you know, open gates and put bales out and move horses and all that kind of stuff by yourself, but when you're trying to video and uh, <laughs> and not crash and all those things, there you can see. I'm gonna switch hands here and I'm gonna lower my bale. And that's just so that I can get out. There's the horses patiently waiting for the bale. So let me see here if this is gonna work. I'm gonna take my lap bar off, open my door. Now I gotta climb up on top of the bale here just to get out. It's a nice view though from up here. I'm going to jump down. Oh, hi boys. You hungry? So since the horses just happen to all be right here, what I'm gonna do is lock this gate over here so that I don't have to worry about them escaping as I put the bale out. See that feeder right there? That's where we're taking the bale. But I'm gonna go through another gate. And uh, this way the horses are locked up so they can't run out if I leave the gates open. We've got a few different horses in this pen. Some you know, some you don't know. This one here is Tyson. He's in his 20s, he's retired. He belongs to a friend of ours and uh, he just kind of hangs out here because he's not ridden anymore. He's just a retired old guy. This you know is Nitro. Yes, Nitro, are you being kind to the old man? Good boy. Um, there's another horse over here named Hippie. <laughs> and then we all know Talon and his friend back there, Screech. Okay, see, this is why it's going to take me 17 hours to do chores because I'm busy introducing everyone. <sighs> okay, so we climb through the gate, and while I'm down here, I might as well open this other gate. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm, uh, I'm back in the skid steer. I gotta switch hands so that I can start rolling here. For me, the daily chores are very therapeutic and they keep me busy, which I love. And especially in the winter, it makes you appreciate the summer even more because here in Alberta, the winters are so unpredictable. Like they can be, um, well, for example, on the weekend it was 10 degrees Celsius and today it's minus 20. So you just really never know what you're gonna get. And I think that makes it even more worthwhile because you really appreciate the nice days. 
and yeah okay so I'm at the feeder now I've been driving I can't switch this around while I'm talking but um, you can see that I'm in front of the feeder now what I have to do is before I put the bale in the feeder I have to cut the net wrap on it because you don't want to leave any strings or twine or uh, net wrap on the bale because if the horses eat that they can choke on it they can die it can get you know it's it's not good so we make sure that that's all removed before the bales go in the feeder and I'm gonna get out and do that right now and I think I have to put you guys down for a moment maybe I'll try to set you up somewhere in the field and then I can use both my hands and you can watch Okay, I'm back in the skid steer, and uh, Tyson, the senior horse, here let me turn so you can see him, uh, he figured out that the bottom gate was open. That's what you get with old age, you get wisdom. So he's the first to the bale, and uh, my guess is that the two ponies will figure it out next. Now, I don't usually leave um, horses on a round bale all the time because they just eat and eat and eat and get way too fat. Um, unless it's a horse like Tyson who is older, um, in his 20s, then it, it's not going to hurt him any just to keep some weight on him. But especially miniature horses, I do not leave them on this bale. But right now it's really cold out, so I don't mind if they're eating a little bit more. But typically I turn the ponies out in our hay field because during the winter in Alberta we don't get a ton of snowfall like we don't have deep snow like Ontario or some of the other places um, in Canada and the US so typically they can pick through the hay field it's a 95 acre hay field so there's lots of food left in there and we don't cut it short uh, right before the snowfall because then that it kills the alfalfa um, you want that kind of base layer to protect the crop and so our horses go and they graze on that most of the winter, which is good for them because it's really nutritious food, but they're also healthy grazing, right? So they're keep, it's keeping their mind and body active, they're covering distance. All of those things are very important for um, horse health. So it's basically just, uh, I'm not giving any uh, horse health information here other than the fact that you do what's right for your own herd, your own climate, where you live. Everybody's different. Not everybody has access to a 95 acre hay field that they can turn their horses out on safely. Um, so it's just, it's whatever works for you and your horses. And I was right. The next one to come, of course, is Screech. It's, <laughs> it's always the little ones that seem to, oh, and here comes Talon. I don't know if you can see him trotting along. <laughs> It seems to be the ponies and uh, the seniors that find the buffet first. Um, but it's getting warm in here. That's another thing. There's heat in this skid steer, which I love sometimes. But when you're dressed for the weather, and I'm very climatized to Alberta's cold, uh, you get hot when you're out doing this kind of stuff. So I'm going to try to attempt and drive with my right hand and video. Okay, no, that's not going to work. Hold up. Switch hands. There we go. So that's one thing I really like about the skid steer is when you're just driving, uh, you just have to use one hand and then when you're doing anything with the bucket, like usually when we're plowing snow or and you can see them, see them in the background there happily grazing on the bale. Um, and then sometimes what I'll do is I will turn them uh, into the pasture with the bale for a few hours in the morning and then I'll kick them out into the hay field and then I'll turn them back in for a couple hours in the evening and that just kind of helps regulate their feed as well. So I'm just going through gate number one, and now I'm going through gate number two, and I'm gonna have to let you guys go for a moment. Okay, gates are all closed, horses are fed. Uh, the cows are also out there too. We didn't see them because they're out in the hay field, which the gate is open to the big hay field. And, uh, sorry, I've turned up my speed a little bit. I am just gonna spin this around, park it inside so that it stays nice and warm, and then I will go into the um, chicken coop and do chores there. So I'll bring you along with me there. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, I'm in the chicken coop now, and the chickens slow down laying quite a bit. I just got a few eggs today. Um, I always put them in my pocket and then sometimes forget about them, and you know what probably happens. Oh, hi, mister. Hi, hi. Um, I've got a few chickens in here, and then the rabbits. So I, I should say I fed them already. Um, so I make sure that they have food, water. I grab the eggs. I always try to grab the eggs last before I go in the house because for obvious reasons. Uh, the rabbits are in this maze of pens back here. So I keep um, just these freezer baskets full of hay at all times for them. So this is kind of like their hay feeder. And then they have um, electric water so that they always have water. And they live usually in there. I'm not gonna pull it apart because it's hard to get back together, but it's full of straw bedding inside that um, uh, culvert tube there. And so they make a nice cozy bed. And I've tried different years um, trying to keep them in the chicken coop where it's heated. They hate it. Uh, the rabbits are just like the wild rabbits around here. They grow this really thick coat for the winter and they overheat. Um, so they actually much prefer just to be outside. Now that's not, that's not saying that goes for all rabbits, but these Flemish giants, uh, when they're allowed to grow in their thick coat, they much prefer being outdoors. So I've kind of learned what works for different animals and what makes the animals the happiest. But for the rabbits, they definitely prefer to be outdoors, these ones anyway. And they have this gate that goes out into a bigger pen so they can run around out there as well. Um, when the, the spring grass is just starting to grow up, I keep them out of here so that it um, allows that to, to grow up. But uh, that's pretty much it for chores this morning. Uh, things that you didn't see. Well, I obviously fed the dogs, the cats. Uh, you saw me feed the horses. That was about it today. It depends on the day. Every day is different. When it's a bit warmer, I clean pens, but I don't usually do that when everything's frozen because moving frozen poop, it's never a good idea either. So I'm just about to go inside and make lunch and uh, I'll try to post. I just had to take all these videos not on Instagram, so I'll try to post them all, but I find my internet's really slow in the country. So as I post them, sometimes they don't all go together in sequence, especially when there's a lot of them. So we'll see if this works or not. And, um, and let me know if you enjoyed this or you're like, don't waste your time, Amber. This was uh, really boring to watch. Um, but thank you for joining me and uh, allowing it to take three and a half more hours than it should have. No, I'm just kidding. And your weather for today, I guess I better get that in. Uh, right now it's not too bad. I don't even have gloves on. My gloves are in my pocket. It said it was supposed to be a high of minus 15 today, but I think we're above that. I think it feels like about minus seven to me at the moment. Uh, not too bad. And especially when you're keeping busy and you stay warm and I'm dressed up, um, I'm all, all Kimes out today. So uh, I'm not sponsored by Kimes, but uh, I do love their stuff. This is an awesome jacket and uh, matching hats, good chore coat. And as long as you're dressed for the weather, then you can do anything. And that's one thing I love about living in Canada is, you know, you get a break from each different season and you get to experience hot summers and cold winters and everything in between. So I'm just rambling now. Um, take care, everybody. Have a great day.